Of course, um, today we're talking with um, a solo artist and metal church uh, singer, Ronnie Monroe. How you been doing, Ronnie? Oh, I've been busy, man, but I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. And of course, the last few years, um, you've been a successful solo artist um, since um, Metal Church played your last game. But I understand the band has um, re recently decided to reunite. Um, you want to talk, talk a little bit um, about how uh, the band decided to get back together? Sure. Well, you know, we were offered uh, the 70,000 tons of metal crews a couple of years in a row now. And, um, you know, basically Kurt gave me a call and, and said, you know, would you be into doing that? And I said, yeah, sure, man. And, uh, you know, basically all of us in the band from the past have remained friends and all that. And so uh, we basically just put the thing back together and... Uh, going to be a blast. Um, we're going to do the whole first record in its entirety for one of the sets, and then after that we're going to do uh, you know, a bunch of the other stuff that, that was very popular. They call it the greatest hits set list. But yeah, that's at the end of the month here, and um, we're going to go in there, see what happens, kick some butt, and uh, then we'll decide what we're going to do after that. Okay, now... Um... And, and, and so where, um, when you guys are performing on the cruise, do you know where about um, the cruise is going to go? I, I believe it, yeah, it starts in Miami, and then it goes, uh, uh, you know, I'd have to look at it, but it's uh, over to Mexico somewhere. And have you ever done anything like that? <laughs> I'm sorry I have a more specific place and whatnot. It's pretty much, I have to play the gig, so I'm getting on the boat regardless of where it's going. Yeah, and... and um, yeah, I, I imagine this is kind of a different type of thing for you, but you've never done anything like that as far as uh, performing on a cruise ship? Well, actually, I've been on one cruise before, and uh, the person I was with sent me some shots and aired me in the karaoke competition, and I actually won. Wow. So, so I sang on the uh, the big stage in a karaoke championship. Never thought I would do that, but... Uh, but as far as playing with the band on the ship, no. And I believe you actually play one of the sets up on the deck by the pool. So uh, this is going to be very cool, man. And what a gig for Metal Church to reunite for. Yeah, um, it's a great way to relaunch the band now. Um, do you know, like, when you guys are on the cruise, are you going to um, be pretty busy performing? Are you going to have any time to get off the boat and, uh, you know, when you stop in the different ports? Well, to be honest, I believe the plan on that is, is I mean, it's only four days. And uh, I'm also part of, uh, they're going to be doing some, like, all-star jam sessions on the boat and whatnot, so they asked me if I'd be part of that. And so I'm going to do that as well to keep me busy, but I believe we only leave the boat once. Wow. We dock at a certain island, and I guess everybody gets to get off for the day there. But there's so many bands and activities going on that we're pretty much going to be on the boat. And so are you looking forward to seeing any of the other bands play? Uh, you know, I really like Gotthard. Uh, they've got a new singer. Unfortunately, their old singer uh, died in a motorcycle accident a while back, and so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing them. And um, you know, just basically doing a lot of networking and uh, kind of reintroducing myself as well as Metal Church back into the scene. Okay, now Ronnie, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, going back. Um, can you share with us? Tell us a story how you first got the gig in Metal Church and, and what year that was. Sure, man. Uh, basically, I met Kurt Vanderhoof through a mutual friend, and he was at the time doing his solo band, Vanderhoof. So, I went out and watched him play, and noticed that uh, he could have maybe had a better singer, so I, I contacted him, asked him about it, and we met up, and basically hit it off, and I brought up Metal Church. And at first he was very like, ah, you know, I don't want to do that because of the reunion with David Wayne and nice and it, it was a disaster. And basically they named that tour Disaster Piece wow. <laughs> because it just didn't go well. So he was really like, I don't know if I want to do that. But being that Metal Church in that first record was, uh, well, it's a classic metal record, one of the most classic thrash metal records of all time. And I was a huge fan. So I kept bringing it up. So after about a couple of weeks of me bringing it up to him and giving him discs of previous stuff I demoed on with a lot of screams and whatnot, he finally called me up one day and uh, asked me, okay, so you want to do Metal Church? I said, yeah, man. And that was it. And we so, joined together and the rest is history. I imagine that'd been the, that's kind of, at that point, been the biggest gig you'd ever um, 
Yeah, so talk a little bit about what was that like, you know, going from being a metal church fan to being up there on stage with the guys. That must have been an incredible experience. Well, you know, myself as well as a lot of guys out there, like now Todd LaTorre, that's fronting Queensryche. It's, you know, Rip Rowans, who's a movie rock star, I think, was based after a little bit. That was kind of my rock star moment as well. I had been working my butt off for years. And I did play Vaughn before that with a Seattle band called Rottweiler. Okay. So I was basically that was my biggest, my first big stepping stone to playing a major festival, and you know, but yes, Metal Church was and will always be, you know, my stepping stone into the so-called big time. <laughs> yeah. And it's been a blast, man. There's been a lot of ups and downs, but uh, we're coming back. We're going to see what happens after the cruise, and we'll see what happens in the future. You know, and let me ask you now, from a fan standpoint, um. It seems like um, that, that when you first joined the band that um, most of the Metal Church um, fans were very welcoming and very accepting. Um, did you feel that right away? or? Well, you know, dude, um, it's a, you're in a rock and a hard place there. I'm, you, any guy that's coming in to fill the shoes of the original guy or guys, in this case, they, Metal Church had success with both singers. Yeah. And for the most part, I've been welcomed, but there's always going to be the naysayers and the ones that live in the past. And to be honest with you, it doesn't bother me. At first, I was a little taken aback and was like, hey man, what, what are you saying that about before? But then I got it because I did the same kind of thing when I was younger when I saw guys replacing some of my favorite singers. That's just the, that's kind of the nature of the beast, man. So basically, I just learned to, to go out there and do the best job that I can. And as long as I do that, then it doesn't matter what everybody else says. Yeah, because, you know, I think you've been, you've been part of a band long enough that um, I think people accept you as much a part of a band as um, Kurt or any of the guys that, you know, um, have been in the band over the years. Um, and so um, talk about some of the people that influenced you as far as um, singers and that when you were growing up. Well, I've got a lot of different influences. I mean, I've always kind of cited uh, D.O. Dickinson and Halford as far as the metal stuff, man. But you know, there's uh, Ian Gillen from Deep Purple, David Byron from Uriah Heep, uh, a lot of Motown stuff, just a lot of AM rock radio that I used to listen to with my mom when we drive out and whatnot and take trips. And So I've got a lot of different influences, man. And, and basically, as long as you can sing really well and you can write a good song, well, I'm a fan. Wow. And you know, I think for anybody who's... Um heard any of your solo releases i'll agree that um while it's definitely um metal it's it's not as uh you know it's almost got like a little more of a progressive or kind of a queensrike sound to it um uh do you feel with your solo stuff you're able to uh, stretch out a little more and um you know do a little more what you want as as you are maybe in a like metal church well yeah man a little bit because of course metal church you know there's something expected of that and i sing like that Anyway, but there's more sides to me than just that. As you probably know, I did a couple tours with Trans Siberian Orchestra in the past uh, last year and whatnot. And well, actually, one this year, the spring tour, which afforded me the chance to sing even differently than I've ever had before. So, yes, it gives me that chance. And one thing that I would like to think that the fans that I do have understand about me is is that I'm not just a metal singer. I love both. It's always going to be in my blood. But I also want to be able to spread my wings and sing different stuff. So, uh, and I think I've been able to show that as well. Like on Fire Within, I had the song Ride Me. And, you know, that was a departure from the metal. And I kind of did the same thing on Lords of the Edge with Goodbye to the Black and Still Alive. So, and that's going to be the same on my next record, which I'm already working on. I'm going to throw in some different stuff in there as well. You know, it's just, uh, so to answer your question, I, uh, I do get to spread my wings a little bit more with my solo stuff. Okay, so, um, so, um, right now you're, you're kind of, um, going to do the cruise and see how that goes off, but, um, you think you guys might do a, um, an album? Well, you know, things are being talked about. You know, a bunch of stuff that are, you know, we're in conversation about a lot of different things. So, uh, like I said, we've got to do this boat gig first, and then uh, we'll let everybody know what we decide after that. 
Okay, now as far as you... you... I hope that we do. Just to finish up on that. Yes, I hope that we do do a record. I mean, we've been talking about doing a live record for a long time now. So, there you have it. And you think if you guys were to uh, do a live album... Do you think it would be like um, a collection of, um, you think it would just be one show, or do you think it would be a collection of um, cuts from like various um, shows from throughout the tour? Well, we've got stuff from different tours from the past. Okay. You know, we've, we've been pretty good about that kind of stuff. So, you know, we got some of that, we've got some video stuff and whatnot, which, uh, like I said, once we actually get this boat keep done with, and uh, decide exactly what we're doing, then there will be a, a you know, the regular press release kind of filling in, you know, letting everybody know exactly what we're going to do. And now, um, of course, um, um, let me ask you now, being a, being a guy that joined Metal Church, you know, you know, you were a fan first, um, like you were saying, um, anybody you talk to knows anything about Metal Church, they always go back to that uh, debut album. What do you think it is about that album that stood up so well over the years? Well, number one, Kurt Vanderhoof is one of those guys, man. He walks around with symphonies that's going on in his head. And even from a young age, the guy was able to write. It's the songs on that on that record. It's the fact that they were very young. And they also just threw the cans on and recorded that thing live. Okay. You know, it was just spontaneous. And they captured something. They rocked out and they captured fire there on that record. And that, that's why it is as great as it is and why so many people love the record. Yeah, because, you know, in, um, in, in doing research for this, um, getting ready to interview you today, um, I was reading on the Internet um, that, that the band, you know, split up a couple times due to, um, like, Kurt's frustration, um, you know, with the industry. Um, it seems like Metal Church is a band that people know about, and you guys have kind of you made a little dent, dent as far as, um, you know, but, like, you guys never seem to get the respect, like, of a Megadeth or Metallica. Why do you think that is? I do think that it has to do with, um, you know, the member changes throughout the years and whatnot. And Kurt did get very frustrated with, with the scene. I, I guess what I should say about Kurt, um, a lot of great things. And one of the great things in, that I do really like about Kurt is, is his integrity as far as when it comes to the music. When he, when he got out there with the band and whatnot, well, all that other stuff started going on. You know, all the inside things with management and having to be on the road constantly and to make the money and, and this and that. And although many, many musicians, that's what they live for and want to have that, he wanted that at first as well, but it's always been about the music first for him. And I really respect that. So... You know, that's kind of, I think, a lot to do with it. And, you know, you get out there, man, it was the 80s. Yeah. You know, people were into a lot of different things back then. And, and uh, you know, being in a band is like being married four or five times over. Sometimes it gets really difficult to deal with one another, and things just imploded, I guess. Yeah, because, you know... Um... <laughs> you know, and interesting enough, I, I've, I've read articles recently, you know, they got the so-called... Um big four bands, um, and a lot of, a lot of, um, industry people have been, um, saying that they put Metal Church, like, in the next, um, next wave of those, you know, the next big four bands, um, you know, as far as, um, like, Testament and, uh, Testament and, you know, other bands that just kind of, you know, almost Exodus. made it. Yeah, Exodus. You know, and, yeah, um, man, to be honest, I actually, Don Jameson on that metal show a few episodes ago, that was his pick. He held up, I think, the album cover up the dark and said, I thought that Metal Church should be in the next big four. Yep. Well, you yeah. know, of course, some fans would they could differ with that because of, I'm not a singer and whatnot, but that doesn't matter. For Kurt's sake and for the band itself, Metal Church is huge, yeah. in my opinion. And they deserve respect. So if not for me, at least for Kurt to be out there, I believe the Metal Church should in the big myself. And now, do you, do you think, like, when you guys, if, if and when you guys go to record a new studio album, um, is a blueprint, like, for that kind of um, a combination of um, of all the things Metal Church has done throughout the years? Or, like, do, do you think you might hold up that first album and say, you know, we want to do something like this? <laughs> well, you know, I would really love to reach out to Metal Church and say, hey, you know, we want to do something like this. 
was on that first record. But again, you know, that was many, many years ago. And I'm not saying that we can't, but I almost, you know, I don't want to do another record just like that one because that one stands on its own. Yeah. I want to do the best record that we can do with this lineup. And definitely the best, this will be, if we do a record, would be my fourth record. And I really want that record to be the best one that I have done at the yeah. church. As we all do. I mean, every band goes in hoping that they're going to make a great record. You know? Yeah. say this, if we do that, you know, it's, it's going to be a good one. We, we have faith. And of course... That you- is if we decide to do that. And of course, um, Kurt's like um, the main writer, but um, I imagine being the singer that you're equally involved with the writing of the lyrics. I have uh, been very lucky. Kurt likes my writing. So, uh, you know, basically on Way to the World, I did like 75% of the lyrics. I Light in the Dark, I did everything but one song and the same on this Desert Wasteland. But on this uh, coming record, like I said, if we do it, we've, like I said, we've talked about everything. And within our conversations, I had mentioned to Kurt as well about lyrical writing and everything like that, and um, we'll, like I said, dude, we'll see what happens, but um, if he wants to write more lyrics than what he has in the last couple records, I, I welcome that. Whatever it is that we have to do to make the songs the best that they can be. And so, that's what, that's mm-hmm. what it should be about. Yeah, and so um, let me ask, you know, every time there's a change in a band, um, I kind of believe every you know every member of a band um, kind of brings some something to the uh, table. What do you think you've added to the metal church sound or brought into? What do you think you bring to the band? Well, what do I bring to the band? I mean, obviously, um, well, I'm always there. Yeah, <laughs> I love what I do. I love the music. Um, I'm pretty good lyricist and whatnot. I work hard. I work fast. But also, I can sing both styles. I mean, Dave's voice, I used to drive around singing that first record, not knowing that 20 years plus later I would actually be doing those songs live. Wow. So, you know, I, and Mike Howell, I like that stuff too. I'm more of a fan of the David Wayne era myself. But, uh, you know, I, I believe I can do a pretty good uh, job on, on both singers. Okay. And then I also bring myself. Yeah, you know, no. my, my voice and whatnot. So, uh, you know, always just working hard. And uh, just seeing what's going to happen in the future with this whole thing. And as far as when you joined the band, I was curious, um, as far as performing the classic uh, Metal Church material, um, did you want to kind of um, put your own spin on the tunes, or did you want to um, kind of stay true to um, how the original um, guy sang them? I tried to stay pretty close to the original, but I also throw in some of my own stuff. But, you know, I feel it's necessary to... Like on this boat, we're doing the first record. So the way that I'm rehearsing this stuff is, you know, singing it the way I sing it, but also keeping Dave in there as well. Because okay. I'm honoring Dave with this, the whole band is doing this as well. Wow. And Dave still has a lot of fans, as he should. I'm, I'm one of Dave's fans. Yeah. You know, so I'll sing this stuff as close as I can, but with keeping myself in there as well. Okay. Um, so, um, you're telling me you're also working on a, um, new solo album, um, but I imagine, uh, Metal Church, um, is gonna be the priority, but, um, how, how, how far along are you into the new album? Uh, this is the writing process right now, just doing writing demos and whatnot, you know, seven, eight songs, somewhere in there, and, but keep in mind as well, I mean, regardless of what happens with Metal Church, after the boat, we decide we're coming out and we're gonna conquer the world and all that. Kurt still has Tesla Ballet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Tate, you know, he's still involved with, with Transiberian Orchestra, always has been and always will be, I, I believe. And, and uh, you know, I'm doing my thing as well. So, because there is this age, room to do more than just one thing. And of course... One thing we're not going to do, when we when we be together with this lineup, you know, in 04, in 05, we went out and we toured endlessly for almost two years. And, I mean, that was that was great for a while, but we're not going to do that this time. And that's offered an opening slot for a major band or something like that. You know, we're going to pick and choose what we do. And do you think you guys will stick mostly, like, to the big European festivals, or do you think you'll take it, you know, around the world? 
Well, like I said, we first off have to figure out what we're going to do, uh-huh. you know, after the boat gig, and then uh, I would imagine that we would play uh, in the states as well. We'll play everywhere that they want us, but where it makes sense. Yeah. Before, before we kind of ran ourselves into the ground, and that had a lot to do with us disbanding, was that we took a lot of gigs that we shouldn't have taken, and we, you know, we made some poor choices this time around. If we decide to to do what I, what we all want to do then we're going to do it a little bit differently and be smarter about it. And you think uh, the band haven't been away for a few years? Do you think um, think the break the break has been good for you guys as far as um, you know being ready to get back out there again and play with each other? Uh, say that one more time, please. I said, do you think um, the band not having played for the last few years um, has been a good little break You know, as far as um, you guys wanting to get back together and being ready to rev Metal Church up again? Oh, yeah. No, we're... Everybody's excited about this, really excited about it. And, uh, you know, I've got a huge smile on my face every day when I'm rehearsing and, and whatnot. It's, uh, you know, and we all feel that. We're, we're all talking to one another on the phone and whatnot. And like I said, we didn't just band because we didn't like each other. Yeah. We just needed a break. So I think we waited long enough, and I think this is a good time. Yeah, I think... Uh... In all honesty, I think we're going to end up doing something, but... I don't want to say anything outwardly because yeah. we need to get this kick done with first and then, like I said, a hundred times. And, and then, let everybody know. Yeah, and you know, and I, I again, I think the band's been away long enough that um, there's a hunger for a um, for a band um, from the fans. You know, um, would really like to see you guys get out there. So I think that's going to be exciting. Um, if you if you get a chance, much to go out and uh, check any bands out yourself or go see people play live. Oh yeah, I'm sure that I will. I mean, there's, a, there's either that or go stay in my room. Yeah. So, uh, and there are small rooms on boats. So uh, yeah, I'll go check out some some bands. You know, I'm gonna bring my camera and take some photos and probably take some photos of other bands and middle on and just hang with the fans. I, that's one thing that we metal church as a band has always been kind of noted for. I mean, we used to have a lot of the people that would send us notes after our tours and whatnot saying how much they appreciated that we took the time to, to go out into the crowd after the show and, and to hang out. And I think all bands should do that because after all, it's the fans that, that support the band. And, you know, Ronnie, uh, something I'd like to ask you about is um, is an interesting footnote. I know a couple of years ago you were offered um, to join Lily and Axe and um, you didn't end up staying with the band. You kind of took yourself out of that because you felt um, once you got in the studio and started working with them that... that you felt that you didn't really fit um, that band. You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I'll comment on that. Um, basically, the situation was, actually, no, I never did get in the studio with them. Okay. And I'm not going to go into the whole thing. I understand. I did one acoustic gig with them and one gig at, at BB Kings and whatnot, and it just didn't well. And basically, once I was there, I did the shows, and we were talking about writing a record and, and things like that. It ended up just not being comfortable for me. And then I started really, really thinking about it, going, does, does this style of music really fit me? And my choice on that was that it did. Okay, you know, because um, I, I, I guess I got to say that says a lot about, um, about your character and the fact that a lot of people, um, you know, even though Lily Nax is another band that... Um, you know, people know who they are and they haven't, you know, quite made the huge uh, splash, but um, that would have been a big uh, gig for many people and they would have just jumped at the chance. I, I think it says a lot about you that um, th- that you did what was best for, for you and, and them as well, you know, taking yourself out of that if you really didn't feel comfortable doing that. And um, so, again, um, I think that says a lot about your um, character. Do you have anything else you're currently working on you want to let us know about? Yeah, well, first off, I appreciate you saying that. And also, with that said, Steve Blaze and whatnot, and the guys in the band are all good guys. And Steve's a very good guy and a really good songwriter. So they ended up finding a good singer and whatnot, and I think they're doing fine. So, yeah. But in, anyway, to answer that other question, um, yeah, let's see what else am I working on. Right now, the main focus is uh, this gig with Metal Church. You know, I'm also doing a project with a band called Black Mass Rising. Okay. which is a real metal thing and whatnot, but that, that's, you know, that's a project and all that, but the main focus is the gig with Metal Church here and the future and seeing, uh, seeing what we can do to, to get back out there and do it the right way. Okay. 
And um, one, one final thing I'd like to ask you, um, where do you stand, um, Ronnie? Like, um, what's your opinion of a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Cause the reason I'm asking is, um, for example, this year, um, Rush and Hart and Deep Purple and Joan Jett were um, kind of hard rock acts that were um, nominated to be inducted, and yet the ones that made it in were Rush and Hart, which is, I think they're very um, deserving, but how could you not have a band like Deep Purple in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, maybe they didn't get in because of Rich Blackmore's comments about how he didn't care about getting in. <laughs> and there's something, to be, there's something to be said about that. Yeah. For myself, I'm nowhere even worried about, near worried about ever being in <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But, you know, for me, it's basically about the individual and feeling accomplished within yourself. I mean, it's nice to get awards and whatnot. But I think as long as you know your place in history and what you've given uh, old musical history, then that should be good enough. Deep Purple definitely should be in. Yeah. You know, but I'm sure they do in their hearts that they know that they are. The fans, at least for me, they're in there. They've been in there for years, in my mind. Yeah, and are you looking forward to um, um, hearing the new Black Sabbath album when it comes out um, with Ozzy? Uh, yeah, I'm forward to that man because I'm a huge fan of Sabbath and mm. all the stuff they're going through now and whatnot with you know Gio passing which mm. was tragic and Tony and um, Tony with, with you know also battling cancer and all that stuff and um, and really I pray that, that he's going to be okay but it's Black Sabbath man yeah I've loved everything they've done and you were talking a little bit about um, uh, Ronnie James Dio was one of the guys that influenced them I was curious if um Throughout your time in Metal Church, you ever had the opportunity to meet him? Yeah, I actually got to meet Ronnie only one time. Um, it was at, uh, it was either Steels of Rock or Wells Rock. It was Wells Rock Festival, I believe, in 06. And uh, he walked by our little dressing room and whatnot, and I became fanboy immediately. You know, started shaking even a little bit. Just, he was like my idol, so... And he was such a nice guy. You know, I won't yeah. say anything about the conversation, but, you know, he shook my hand, he hugged me, he told me I was great, and all this stuff. And it was just, it was one of those moments that I'll never forget. Yeah, you know, everybody I've ever talked to, ever had any kind of um, encounter with him said nothing about, you know, except what a great guy he was. And, um, and I think, you know, you know, I was just such a huge fan of, um, especially the Heaven and Hell album he did with Black Sabbath, because... If you if you think back that at that time, uh, um, everybody thought Sabbath was gonna go downhill, and he just took it to another another level with his songwriting and his singing. Um, exactly. Yeah, you know, and you've kind of done the same thing um, with Metal Church in the sense that um, again, you're not an original member, but I, I think you've been in the band long enough that um, many of fans um, accept you just as part of a band as the rest of the guys. Um, and so. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, when you, um, how often do you get a chance to communicate with your fans? I mean, I imagine people hit you up on Facebook and stuff. Uh, well, yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm on there. I mean, I've got uh, a couple people from the label, from that pack that are, that also oversee stuff, but I'm on there a lot myself. And I return messages. Uh -huh. You know, I post things and whatnot, try to put positive messages on there for people and, and whatnot. And so, yes, you can send me messages on Facebook whenever you want, and, and so, yeah, what I'm all about, mm -hmm. I'm all about the fans, like I said before, I don't want to sound cheesy or anything like that, but, you know, if you're not kind to your fans, you don't deserve to have them. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, I totally, totally agree, and you, and you can see the people that um, are real about it, and you see people that um, really don't give a damn, and um, it, it does make it, it does make a difference, you know, um, and so, um, what's your favorite part, um, performing live, or, um, do you like going in the studio? Um, well, I like it all, man. But I, the live thing, of course, is a lot funner. The studio, you're, you know, pretty much, you know, under the microscope and just being drilled and whatnot. Do this over again, do this over again. And that's even with me, myself, producing myself on my solo records. I'm still real hard on myself. But it's different processes. I like them both. <laughs> Playing live, of course gives you that freedom to rock. Yeah, you know? and you have a lot of the same guys played on the um, 
two solo albums, but do you, do you have different guys that you take out with you when you um, perform live? Yeah, I've, I've had to do it that way now, but as far as on the record, I like working with different people and whatnot, and yeah. because of the things that I've been able to, to do, I've been able to, you know, bring in guys like Chris Caffrey, you know, from, from GSS Sabotage to write a song or two, Michael wrote the Queen's like, you know, so I like doing that because, well, they're friends of mine and, and I respect their play. Uh, also really cool that I found them on my record, so... Yeah, and I'm going to continue to do that. But as far as playing live, I've had to use, you know, a couple different bands, but I'm actually uh, working on for my next time out to have a set band there on the East Coast. And uh, that, I mean, that's the goal that I'm working towards. And, and where's home base? Yeah, for, one band. And where's your home base now, I ask, because I know um, Metal Church, for example, started out on the um, in San Francisco. So you get the, the, um, as far as Metal Church goes, they, they got roots in... Um, San Francisco, and I know um, uh, they eventually moved over to um, Washington. So, um, where are you living these days? Well, I'm back in Washington State. I'm uh, out in the uh, Seattle area. Okay, and um, well, um, I know you're a very busy guy, Ronnie, so um, I want to thank you for taking time to do this. I really appreciate this. And again, I'll send you an email later with all the details of. Um, of the internet radio show it's going to appear on and once I get a date um, where it's going to go up I'll let you know but again this is going to be for the first episode and and I invited you to be part of the first show because um, you know you've been a long time uh, I've been a long time supporter and uh, you've been a long time friend so I wanted to just let people know that you and Metal Church are getting back out there again and um, to look forward to well, another solo album from you well yeah Jason I mean this is really cool of you and I appreciate you thinking of me